Hi there. This is Dr. Zeus Yamianis, or more affectionately known as Dr. Zeus, uh, inviting you uh, into the um, fall semester and spring semester. This, these basically will have the same format, either semester course on the Psychology 370, uh, a course on motivation and emotion. Now I'm going to get right down to it. Um, usually sometimes I take a little while to wind up, but I'll basically say it this way. Um, this particular video is going to give you a quick start guide to this class and to the area of motivation and emotion if you happen to simply just be coming in to view this. And, um, and also will give you some, uh, a very a quick tutorial around uh, the Blackboard Learn website if you're taking the class. So it's a nice way to start. Uh, you don't have to come through a bunch of videos, let you know right away what you need to know. So I guess the first thing that I want to say here is um, basically how important this class is. Um, I'm clicking right now on my quick start guide and you will find that right in uh, listed in Blackboard Learn. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and go down to the corner. Uh, a couple of things here to understand first. Um, and uh, maybe I will talk a little bit about my approach before going to the quick start guide. And that simply is this. I'm I have a PhD. I've done my research in self-esteem, motivation and learning, uh, how emotions affect learning. However, I like to take a very hands-on approach. I'm a practitioner, I'm an experimenter, uh, and uh, I can incorporate, and I do incorporate academic material, but my whole point is to get this to be applied for you. It should be a kind of course that brings things together, all of the different classes you've had, applies it to your personal life, to your professional life, and to your relationships. So I'm really very um, happy to say this is a class that's going to be different than a lot of the others. You're not just going to be writing papers, you're going to be engaging in experiments about your emotions. You're going to learn to learn into the emotions. Most academic classes and most academic papers talk about avoiding emotions, suppressing emotions, rationalizing emotions, controlling emotions. This class, even with the negative so-called antisocial emotions, we're looking at them as doorways into the root of ourselves, of our beings, of our reactions, allowing ourselves to look into those negative emotions like anxiety and fear as doorways into transformation and helping those negative emotions turn into positive emotions. Joy, happiness, humor, and so forth. That's really the focus of this class. Um, you'd be surprised at how many people have had such a warm response to this class because it actually provided something they could use. And it doesn't, I don't go over heavy on the academic stuff, though I do like to incorporate insights uh, from the academy, I guess you would say, into this class. So let me go right now into the Quick Start Guide here. Now this Quick Start Guide will be on your Blackboard Learn site, and um, I'm just going to go through it. Uh, here it is uh, on your introduction page in your first week. You'll see it there. You can just download it. Um, this class, and I'll just read it, this class may be the most cla important class you ever take. As Paul Ekman, uh, the textbook for this class, says in his introductions, emotions can overcome hunger, sex drive, and even the desire to live. Because emotion is so consequential to our well-being on every level, personal, social, social, familial, and so forth, I'm going to emphasize the applied aspects of this class. We will draw information from academic texts, videos, books, popular culture, and your own experiences, but we will discuss exchange and, exchange and apply this information to a constructive understanding and engagement with how emotions interface with our lives, how they affect motivation, how they influence self-esteem, and how they impact our relationships. If that sounds like an interesting class, then you're in for a good ride. Again, my, you know, uh, capacities that I'm trying to get you to develop in this class are what I call the four C's right up here, the four C's. The first is to be capable. Learn to stretch yourself intellectually, take risks, learn the material, use proper citation. Um, uh, two, to be critical, to be able to analyze the context, including disagreeing with the academic materials. You don't have to agree with these experts, questioning the material and challenging each other respectfully as well as supporting each other, and as oftentimes happen when someone's example resonates with another. Number three, I want you to be creative, effectively and imaginatively applying the insights and examples to your lives. And finally, four, compassionate. That is to connect and care with yourself and others, investigate how emotions affect relationships. So now that we have what I'm really shooting for in this class, let's go into 
organizing your time, materials, and assignment. As a teacher educator myself, with my background in education psychology, multicultural education, the one thing I noticed that many people are never taught <laughs> throughout college and even in teacher education programs is organization. So here's some tips that I've found helpful. On your desktop, on your, on your computer, keep a folder marked Psych 370 on your desktop and then make not 10 folder, subfolders, actually in this case it's going to be 16 subfolders. Uh, that 10 was just for uh, was for the summer class. They only have 10 weeks, okay? So I have 16 subfolders, one for each week, okay? And each week the pattern will be generally the same. Mondays I'll send through email or just look it up, okay? Um, every week will be available to you on the Blackboard Learn, uh, a video link with commentary in my Ask Dr. Zeus. This is where I'm commenting on your work where I address your questions and emotions in a kind of humorous advice columnist persona. Please take notes on the videos I send or that you look up. They will serve you well for the big projects in this class. I'm going to try with this class just having you do the videos online. Each week I do have links to the videos, so just go ahead and click on them. That way, you know, it's not extra work for me and you can just follow along. Tuesdays and each week, you'll have access to the question of the week an assignment that involves accessing academic readings, and you will have, two the group discussion board initial posting and response. This again, these two things, question of the week tends to be more applied academics, and discussion board has to do with more like doing an experiment in your own personal life, right, and writing about it and sharing it with, with other people in your class. Now, Thursday at 11 p.m. is the due date for your initial response on the discussion board, so every week, you're going to get, you know, something on Tuesday that you, uh, on your discussion board, you'll answer it by Thursday, and then you're supposed to do one peer response by Sunday, okay? Every question of the week, you get by Tuesday, and you have to answer that by Sunday, okay? So those are pretty straightforward. Deadlines, again, I'm willing to work with students with very crowded lives. Just let me know so that I can anticipate ad adaptations to the schedule. The reason for deadlines is practical, not moral. I have 34 of you in class, I have like 35 actually, and I need to batch grade. Otherwise, my own sanity and organization goes out the window. And the most important thing here is keep up with the class. If you guys, if life gets in the way, you have a child emergency, you have overwhelmed by other classes. It doesn't even have to be a, you know, a great excuse. It just has to be, listen, it's just I'm overwhelmed. I could use a few extra days. No problem. You get behind, though, week after week, and you decide, ah, I'll lollygag until maybe the fourth week to catch up. Then we're in trouble. Okay? Then you're not going to be able to get credit for this, not staying with the class. It's absolutely critical that you start strong and stay strong. If you wobble a little bit in there, no problem. Okay? Just let me know by email or by message. I'm usually very understanding, but I'm not understanding if you have gone four or five weeks and you've turned nothing in or you've turned one or two assignments in. You need to be on it. That's all I got to say, okay? I don't want to, I'm not anyone's parent here. You need to be on it. So grammar and citation, I'm not a tremendous strickler, uh, stickler on grammar. I'm more interested in your engagement. So be conscientious, but not neurotic in your articulation of material. A few, a few grammar mistakes, the spelling's not so much of a problem, but take the time to proofread, okay? And I'm looking to be uh, impressed by your passion more than your parsing. Citation is really basic. Just use APA style with parentheses. The author, the year, comma, page number. End of story, guys. I think I only use, you only have to use the full bibliographies on the final projects. All the rest of them, that's fine. Just so I know where you got it, that's good. So in terms of evaluation, as I as I'm saying in my introductory video, I want each of us to be high effort, high success students. This does not mean uh, necessarily working long. Okay, you can be succinct and very direct and not spend a lot of time with each question, including the discussion question and the question of the week, but just answer the question. I'm more interested in deep engagement than a shallow broad brush over the materials. Okay, specific is good. Okay, don't try to have to impress me with quoting endlessly passages, go right to your examples, be very succinct about them, boom, okay, move on. Uh, if there are four academic papers, I will ask you to cite at least one, 
So read the summaries, grasp their basic directions, and focus your efforts on a one pager that seems most congenial to you. In that paper, allow yourself to be drawn to the two or three most powerful points. Read broadly enough to gain context, read deeply enough to reach substance. Okay, if I say you only have to quote one site, literally you could get away with just reading one. You should at least skim the others, at least the summary of the others to get an idea. But remember to focus on, you're the one in the driver's seat here. Focus on the readings that make sense to you, that draw to your life, that help you answer the question in a way that works for you. This is really a self-guided class in many ways. I'm a facilitator, I'm not a taskmaster. So if you have a crowded life, go for the one that you think is the most important, boom. Just, just scan over the others and that should be fine, okay? You guys have lives, you have schedules you have to juggle. I don't need to be impressed, I need to know you can apply this work and I need to know that you've engaged. Along those lines, here's how I basically grade. It's very simple. Each one of you know that this is the basic grade scale, okay? If you get an F on something, you didn't show up at all or try at all, or you did so only for part of the class, okay? So if you don't turn in any work, you're going to get an F. A D, basically, that's, a D is given to someone who throws something on paper. It's shallow and thoughtless, and it was clear you did not really take the time to engage the material or others. It's, you know, it's usually, you know, just a passing glance at the actual assignment. A C, you're more conscientious and complete. It looks like you've actually read stuff, but it was not very well thought out and it lacks specific insights, analysis, and applications. It tends toward truisms and cliches like one of my ones I always hated in, in, in education was, I love children for who they really are. That says nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you mean, children? What do you mean for who they really are? You've got to give examples, you've got to go into it, and you've got to explore the topic. Now, here on a B, Bs are usually good sound efforts, right? Good basic grasp of the con uh, concept, workmanlike proficiency, but you're missing some of the passion. So you've quoted something, you've been able to explain a concept, maybe come up with an example in your own life, but it doesn't have a lot of energy around it, okay? You want, if you want to get an A, you're taking it to the next level, all right? You're really getting into it and it shows. That's an A. Creative and critical engagement through understanding and application. Not so much in a technical sense, but a practical and intellectual sense. You're absorbing the insights of others. You're extending them or challenging them. You're getting a sense of how your learning can help the world. What I really like in this class and I really encourage you to do is start to apply these insights to your own profession. Your own profession or your own family life those are the things that matter to you and those are the things that can make you passionate and if you combine it with good analysis and creative engagement they'll get you an a in the class these all go together in a lot of classes they want academic engagement at the expense of bringing your life into it in this class they go together just remember that okay so finally readings and assignments please 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 do not drive yourself crazy trying to spit back material in a fancy way some summary statements showing you, me that you have read, engaged, and digested the basic points of the material are adequate. I'll have a tutorial on reading a, an academic paper. So, so you can go ahead and read that uh, academic, uh, listen to that video and that works, or see that video. Write in the margin of your, you're printing them out, or you know, if you're just using electronic copy, maybe highlight, an insider question that leaps to your mind while you're reading. Again, you only need a few of these to really answer a question. So you can really hone in. That can give you a, a hook to talk about the material, trust yourself, offer what you can, push the boundaries. Remember, this is a class on motivation and emotion, so almost anything is fodder for discussion, including your own disagreements, differing perspectives, and feelings about the material. Just keep it respectful, incisive, and clear. And finally, answer the question of the week components, but do so from your heart your mind and your experience. Please do answer the question. Sometimes people just, they breeze by the question, they get something that's some, some similar to the question, they don't actually answer the components of the question, okay? Uh, for discussion boards, take the week's subject in interesting and personally relevant directions. I want this class to provide useful skills and tools. So here's your conclusion here for um, the quick start guide to this class. I encourage you to see this series of lessons as helping you to better exercise your freedom to choose and exert agency in your own life. 
that is neither being swept up in emotions nor entirely removed from them, but to engage and develop them for healthy pro-social and personal purposes. In any situation, you will gain abilities to ask and answer which emotions are being expressed here. What attributes or traits, or what are the attributes or traits of these emotions? What are the issues around them? What, uh, why is it important to study emotions? What are the consequences of emotions? What possibilities are opened up by certain emotions and what possibilities are closed down? So again, that should give you a basic understanding of what's going on here. And now we're just going to go ahead and give you a little bit of run through on the, on the, on the layout, the electronic layout of the online class itself. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so when you come into the class, okay, you probably won't have this. This is my uh, personalized thing. What you want is the Psych 370 Motivation and Motion Fall 2017 class. These are the ones from previous classes that I had. This allows me to send an email to all of you. This this thing here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and I'll give you a little bit of a tour here. Okay. The first thing you want to do when you get into the course is, is really pay attention to this sidebar here on the left. Okay. So if you run down here, you say it says start here week one. We'll just click right on that. Okay. Here's week one. What you'll see here are the updated syllabus for fall, the quick start guide that I just showed you, and a calendar. Okay, I'm going to do a separate video with those two involved. But again, you can read through this. I won't take a lot of time. Some of the highlights are, again, this is an entirely web-based course. Okay, I encourage you, these are uh, bolded areas. Watch my introductory videos for week one to get a good idea, like this one. Okay, this, uh, and I give reading summaries most weeks. So make sure to check out those videos, especially if you're a visual auditory learner. Watch the quick guide and syllabus and cal calendar videos from this instructor. This is the quick guide video. I'm going to do one that it's a syllabus and calendar one. Okay. And again, make sure you start strong. Okay. As we go down, and this happens every week. All right. You'll basically have an introduction here. Okay. Now in this particular one, I'm going to have to change these links because these were for summer uh, using this video as a link, but you can click on those links. You'll get an introduction. This is syllabus and calendar one. There's a quick start guide. Okay, uh, notice I have the syllabus here, messages. Okay, you can click on messages here and it'll bring you to messages. Okay, again, very easy. You just click on your inbox, create a message right up here and you're ready to go. The other way to get quickly to messages, notice here in the sidebar. Um, and again, messages is something you can send to me or you can send to the entire class. Okay, you can click on the messages in the sidebar Voila, same thing comes up, click on inbox and create message. There you go. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to week one and scroll down again to messages. That's taken care of. Again, do Thursday, answer these questions, one through seven. Uh, the other one is uh, one called introduce yourself. If you click on, usually if you click on any of these, they will bring you up to the assignment. This is 10 points. Okay. Now this said, no items found, okay? Usually when you click on that will happen. This had a little bit of a glitch in it. So for the first, for to find that, uh, that thread, okay, um, here's what you can do, all right? We're gonna go down to uh, discussion boards, okay, here. Let me see here, uh, there it is, okay? Click on that. Um, whoop, it's not that one. Let me go ahead and click on the other one. Group presentation posting sites. Uh, and here we go. And there it is. Okay. So go down here. It says shortcut to group presentation posting sites. For some reason, introduce yourself. Got stuck in that one. Okay. So you can go into this, right? Um, and, uh, and in fact, I might even just change this. Uh, to, uh, uh, I can rename the link, or I'll do it right now, okay. Um, I'll put intro, introduce yourself, intro yourself, plus. There we go, we just got it. You notice that intro yourself plus shortcut to the group presentation posting sites. Okay, now you've got it, okay. Um, I'm going to start up here. 
you can't do this, by the way. I'm, I'm editing on, on my site. Uh, only an instructor could edit those kinds of names. So start here, week one. Okay, we're going back down there. We now know how to get into messages. We now know to get into how to introduce yourself. Okay. And finally, there's lesson one, emotional literacy. Okay. If you click on these headers, they should bring you up to, here you go, week one. Okay. Week one, emotional literacy question of the week. Here's the assignment. You want to submit it. You click on this, right? And you notice what comes up. You have a due date, September 3rd, points possible 15. And you have the questions and you have a place here to submit. That's basically the way it's going to be every week. I will go through week two and we'll do the same thing. So you get an idea of this. Okay, so course materials weeks two through five. Okay, here we are. All right, here it is. Week two. Okay. Week two reading prompt. Please read. Now, there's no clicking here because there's nothing to click through. Okay, this is just a reading prompt. It's kind of an intro. How do you get to your weekly discussion boards? We will go through that. But in case you want a, a primer, it's there. And here we go. Okay. <clears throat> what is an emotion? So here's our week two. Gives you basic objectives. When we click into that, we will get the entire week two up. We'll have an introduction with videos, a basic discussion, right? Introductory discussion. And then we'll have readings, videos on it for week two, week two discussion board, and the question of the week. Again, the week two discussion board is due Thursday, and the post to your peer is due on Sunday, and the week two question of the week is always due on Sunday. So Thursday initial discussion board, on, uh, on Sunday you have to have a response to appear on the discussion board as well as your question of the week. Okay, now if we click through discussion board, I'm just going to click on it. All right, here we go. Okay, you'll notice you'll have weekly learning community one, weekly learning community two. All right, because this is such a large class, we split you randomly into two groups. Some of you are going to be weekly learning community one. If I go on that, click on that, you'll see the group members there, okay? If you keep scrolling down, I'm not sure why they make so many uh, steps on this, you'll find group discussion board. For all of you in that group, Learning Community One, you click on this, and lo and behold, there are all, there are all your uh, weeks long discussion questions, okay? You just click on one of these, all right? Let's say for week two, it's gonna bring you up, you create a thread, right? And boom, you're off and running. Okay, the great discussion forum, you know, and, and you can reply to others and so forth. Okay, now there's a quick way to get in to um, <clears throat> into the discussion boards, the shortcut to discussion boards. You click on that, you'll notice what we have here are the discussion boards for your group projects at the very end, as well as learning community one, learning community two. You notice every one of you, there's 35 of you has been placed in here. Now this time we'll click on learning community two. Boom, all right. Again, all the rest of you in the class are in, that weren't in the group one are now in group two, as you notice. So you find your name, you go down, you hit group discussion board. And again, okay. Now you have, now you have your discussion things here as well. Okay, all right, so. Um, oh, yeah, now it looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and, um, and make, uh, and give those examples up. Huh. Okay. Looks like those didn't transfer over. So I'm going to have to probably change that as well. There should be full descriptions of these things. I may actually end up just putting you all in, in, in the group community one, uh, <laughs> weekly community one, so they don't have to bother with all of this, but Anyway, uh, this gives you an idea, okay? If you click on these things here, all right, it's still gonna bring you up no matter what it is. You know, um, it'll bring you up to the discussion board for that week, okay? So um, that should pretty much do it. Uh, if you notice, I don't really use announcements. We've gone through messages. We're on the left sidebar here now. Calendar, if you click on your calendar, you'll notice the calendar dates for the various assignments, okay? and um and those should come up okay and then finally uh we have a shortcut to discussion boards we just did that we did intro yourself and the shortcut to group presentation postings
And there's one more that's shortcut to question of the week. I don't really use it. I would just suggest you go in through, um, through the weeks. Again, any week, course materials 10 through 12, okay? You know, if it was week 10, we clicked on that, you'll see the same kinds of things again. Okay, you'll have an introduction, you'll have videos, you'll have readings. In this case, we're doing the group presentation, you know, um, your discussion board for week 10, and the question of week for week 10. You can click on any one of these, it'll bring you up to your learning communities, boom. Put it on learning community one, boom, down to group discussion board. Again, you can find the different ones for you right there. Okay. So um, I will go ahead and make sure that that week two also has all of these things in it. Right. Um, but basically that's it. You don't really need anything besides that. Um, um, and then you'll have great centers and so forth. So I hope that uh, I, I did a pretty quick job on that, uh, but I hope that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, the links are pretty sound. I've tested most of them. Like I said, I think I'm going to have for the second group, make sure I have these kinds of uh, descriptors in there. But other than that, um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And, uh, you know, uh, I think you, you should be able to make your way around here again. Remember, the most important thing is to start with week one. Read through these things, download these uh, documents. Um, again, each time read through the uh, read through the introduction. Here's another syllabus, link for syllabus. Do the messages by Thursday for me. Introduce yourself. Remember, in terms of introducing yourself, this link for some reason does not work. So go up, up here to the sidebar to the intro yourself, okay, <laughs> plus shortcut to postings. Click on that, all right, and you'll notice introduce yourself is here. Go ahead and click on that. And you will be able to, um, oops, oh yeah, create a thread. There we go, okay? Oh, that's what it was. Ah, there was a thread up there. There was no thread, so you can do it. I'm fine, Ugh. Okay, we're going back to week one here. So actually, I was fine on this. You can actually click right through, introduce yourself, boom, create a thread, and you'll be in the right place, okay? I, I, I thought I had that right. Okay, and again, final paper is also on the left sidebar here, and it connects through to the final paper, okay, with the description on that. So you should be in pretty good shape now. Just start with week one. If you have some problems, contact ITS, the uh, support services. Uh, I don't, I'm not here for technical support. I'm just here for content support if you're having problems um, uh, understanding the material, okay? Again, I, I really look forward to having you in class. Um, I'm uh, excited to, to see your experiences and see how this can work for you. Okay, my next video will be on the syllabus and the calendar for, fall and, uh, for spring and fall semesters, for fall and spring semesters. Until then, Zeus, Dr. Zeus signing out. We'll see you.